Hi, Ben Kingsley here with another how-to session. This one is a little bit more of a serious how-to session because I want to talk about potential fraud in regards to lending fraud. Now we've seen the APRA, which is the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, make some significant changes to the way in which consumers can borrow money to invest in property. Now these changes needed to be made because the number of people who are actually investing in property is accelerating and potentially putting pressure on the system. And obviously we don't want to collapse of the property market. So what happens when you are then in a position where you can't actually afford to borrow the money that you thought you were able to afford? Well, what we're talking about here today is if you're going to speak to a professional mortgage broker and they start to encourage you to tell half truths or to potentially lie on your application, well, you need to move on from that mortgage broker. You know, ultimately brokers are paid for the advice that they give, but we also know that there's always a small, very small percentage of brokers who may not do the right thing or may encourage you to actually lie on your application. Now, what are we talking about here? Well, let's break it down. In terms of income, you know, they could potentially ask you to inflate that income. Or, you know, worst case scenario, they could ask you to get a fraudulent, you know, pay slip, which is absolutely, you know, no go. Just walk straight out of their offices there if they're entertaining that type of thing. Um, secondly, they can also look at the number of dependents. So if you've got a wife or a couple of kids who aren't working at the moment, that will increase your level of costs or living costs, and that will reduce the amount of borrowing capacity you have. So they may encourage you not to disclose the number of children you may have on the application. Again, absolutely not on. Um, in addition to that, they may also say, well, let's not disclose the number of loans that you have. So let's reduce that or, or hide some of the liabilities, whether they be credit cards or whether they be other loans, higher purchase, car loans, whatever it may be. You know, they're trying to manipulate the application to allow you to get the funding that you need but, you know, and they think they may be thinking that they're doing the right thing by you, but ultimately they're not. The reason why you may not be able to borrow that money is because your financial circumstances may not accommodate that for you over the long term. And the final one can sometimes be also on the asset side, where they may show um, inflated figures around the total assets that you're holding as well, which the credit assessor is also looking at. So in these uncertain and changing times, it's really important to deal with professional people who have integrity, who can honestly tell you whether it's the right thing to do or not to do, or who can guide you into other ways in which we may be able to solve this problem. Those other ways may be if you're committed to a purchase, say off the plan, and you now, now no longer can get the funding because of the changes, well maybe we need to um, introduce a new purchaser, someone who might take half of the purchase from you. So you bring a family member in and invest together in that particular application. So there are different ways in which it can be done, but what we don't want to do is commit fraud by lying on those loans applications. It's really important to understand that. And that's why this is a bit of a serious how-to message, but again, we don't want to see you in some type of legal or criminal trouble. Thanks for watching.